Hi, my name is Mani Alikani. I am the Dean and Professor at CITOR Academy, and I'd like to welcome you to another session of CITOR channel. The subject of today's discussion is equilibrium. <music> If you remember from previous session, we were talking about the Newton's law. The first law of Newton was very important and it is about equilibrium or balance. If the object, all the forces and moments that apply to it are canceling each other, the object will not move. Or if it's moving with a constant speed, it will stay with that constant speed unless another force or moment apply on the system that would change the balance and therefore the object will accelerate. Equilibrium plays an important role in orthodontics. It allows us to analyze our system. Let's look at an example. What happens if you apply a couple to a tooth? Well, we're expecting a pure rotation. But guess what? In orthodontics, the tooth do not move right away. It takes time. Can you guess how this can happen? Yes. As you apply a couple on the tooth, this couple is transferred to prudentium, the blue arrows that you are seeing in the picture. And according to the third law of the Newton, for any action, there is an equal and opposite reaction. Therefore, prudentium applies an opposite and equal forces to the tooth as a reaction. And therefore the tooth is in balance from one side the wire applies a force from the other side prudentium applies a force to the tooth and the tooth is in balance then why the tooth move very soon we have a biological factor the bone that gradually goes through the remodeling therefore the reaction forces start to disappear in response to that the balance between uh, around the tooth is gone and based on the first law of newton the tooth will accelerate in the direction of the force that is a couple that we applied and it will rotate. When we're having equilibrium in our system, equilibrium is not just on the tooth. It means that every component in our system is in equilibrium. Our appliances are in equilibrium. So for example, if I'm having a spring between two teeth and this spring applies equal forces on the adjacent teeth, the blue arrow, the spring will not move as the teeth are not moving at the moment that we are putting the appliance in the patient's mouth. So we can clear that the spring is in equilibrium. How that can be? Well, it means that the adjacent teeth applying opposite and equal forces to the spring. As long as the teeth are not moving, this system will stay in equilibrium forever. However, as we discussed, the prudentium around the adjacent teeth sooner or later will give up and the teeth move. Therefore, the balance around the spring will change too. And at that moment, the spring starts to move and extend. So, based on these examples, we can study the equilibrium in any part of our system. But where is the most pl practical place that we can study the equilibrium? The most practical place is the place that all the objects in that system are connected to one way or another. Can you guess which part of our system is common between all the objects? I mean between the teeth, prudentium, braces and all? Yes, it is the wire. The wire is the common place that all the objects are connected to each other. Therefore, if you can study the equilibrium at the wire, you can understand what forces and moments each component that is attached to the wire is receiving. This will allow us to see the hidden forces that before we were not, we couldn't see. Let's give you an example. Assume we have a bar that is supported by triangular stand. And assume I'm applying two unequal forces to this bar. From one side 200 centinewton and from one side 100 centinewton. And I tell you that this bar is in equilibrium. You only see the 200 centinewton that I applied and 100 centinewton that I applied. But because you understand the equilibrium, right away you can recognize what hidden forces and moments we have in our system. 
Well, 200 and 100 in one side of a bar is 300 centinewton. There should be something opposite and equal that prevent these forces to move the bar. Yes, the triangular stance produces an opposite force and equal force on the bar. Is that all? No, the 200 centinewton applied with 10 millimeter distance while the 100 centinewton applied with 20 millimeter distance. Each one of these forces producing a moment. Can you guess the amount of the moment? Both moments are equal and in opposite direction. What is the clinical importance of this discussion? Let's start with a very simple example. Assume I'm putting a wire in a bracket on the adjacent tooth and I have a small button attached to the target tooth that I want to move. If I bring the wire up and attach it to the target tooth, you clearly see there should be extrusion force on that target tooth and the target tooth should move. You are right. But there is much more in the system in that you can see in the first glance. Let's just start all over again, but this time look at the wire. Before I bring the wire up, the wire was in equilibrium. It was not moving. Therefore, all the forces and moments on the wire was zero. Okay, now I'm just going to grab the wire and gradually bring it up until I connect it to the button on the canine. Don't pay attention to the teeth. Just pay attention to the wire. At this moment that the wire is connected to both teeth and tied to both teeth, is it moving? No, it's not. The same way that the teeth are not moving. Therefore, you should assume that the wire should be in equilibrium. How wire can be in equilibrium? In one side, we, we brought it up, the blue arrow on the canine. I'll, on the other hand, there should be another force equal in opposite direction. And that force is the one that premolar applies to the wire. Do you remember when we were talking about the couple? Couple was two forces equal opposite in direction parallel. Exactly like what we are seeing here. Therefore, the object should rotate. We are expecting the wire rotates because it's applying a couple on it. But guess what? The wire is not rotating either. So you can see there should be a hidden moments also in opposite direction that applies to the wire. Who can produce that hidden moment? Another couple. Where that couple can appear? Well, button cannot apply a couple on the wire because it has only one contact point, but the bracket can apply a couple on the wire. By recognizing that couple, now you can see that the whole wire is in equilibrium. And why so important? Do you remember when we were talking about the third law of the Newton? I said objects are not in equilibrium with each other when they receive action and reaction. Therefore, they are moving. Here, you cannot say the canine and premolars are in equilibrium. It's a common mistake people do, but it's not correct. The teeth are two different objects. They cannot be in equilibrium with each other, but the wire is. So the wire, the common object between two teeth, is in equilibrium. Now you wanted to see what forces and moment applies to the teeth. Just reverse the direction, the forces and moments that was applied on the wire. Action. You already recognize the action with the blue arrows here. To see the reaction, just draw the opposite moments and forces, the red arrow. Now clearly you can see what forces and moments the teeth will receive. The canine has an extrusion force, but the premolar has an intrusion force. In addition, there is a significant amount of counterclockwise moment applied on the premolar. As you can see, by knowing the equilibrium, we were able to analyze our system in much more detail and see the unknown moments and uh, forces in our system. I'd like to thank you for listening to another session of Citro channel. The topic for the next subject is one couple system. Please don't forget to subscribe to our channel if you did not subscribe and please don't forget to like us. Thank you for your support.